Hey there folks, Chris Waters here with the UB blog at E3 and joined by Michelle Ansel, who was just up on stage at the Ubisoft press conference and that trailer for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Michelle, so excited. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's a very important moment. Even in, in, you know, in my long career, I've made a lot of games. This, mm -hmm. this is great, you know, the return of Beyond Good and Evil after almost 15 years. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. Hey. I, it's a return that so many people are excited about, myself included, and I bet a lot of you have questions about that trailer. So, Michelle and I are gonna sit down, go through the trailer, I'm gonna pick his brain. Hopefully we'll get you some good tidbits about Beyond Good and Evil 2. All right, Michelle, the trailer starts off and immediately we get a glimpse of, we are somewhere in the depths of some city. What is this place? It's a very vertical city. That's what we wanted here to establish uh, clearly. And the other thing is that it's um, based on uh, the level design of the game. Now let's take a look inside here, and uh, can I just say that these dumplings look delicious? I mean, did you purposely try to make them look tasty? They are, they are. <laughs> they are very precise. You see, you see a lot of details. You, it's very micro, you mm -hmm. see. Uh, the, the, you uh, got the seasoning here on top. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> exactly. But the, the big idea behind that is that when you're doing such big games you know, about space, it's very important not to forget about characters, about humanity, you know, simple things, very teeny things. And that's what you can expect to, to see or, or, or experience in this kind of game, mm -hmm. where you travel through space, but uh, your big journey could end into this kind of change. Into some dumplings. Yeah. Well, speaking of scale, this guy's pretty large. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the pig tried to dominate the, the monkey, but the monkey is very confident, has got it's no fear. And they are talking about master and slave and domesticated exactly yeah that's exactly the idea that uh, even between hybrids that are a mix between animal and humans it was a way to establish that there is a social system mm -hmm. in this world and uh, you can clearly uh, have an example here show me the idol show me the redeemer here you go mate I know I'm not the only one who looked at this and heard hey, yo, 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 handy. what he said just there and thought of our beloved Uncle Page from Beyond Good and Evil. Right, there is a there is a direct connection, you know. We here we wanted to, um, so he's really clearly saying uh, Page in, which is a kind of divinity for, for this kind of hybrid. It's a way to 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 add depth and to uh, or just to show how deep the world can be. And even those hybrids created by. Uh, humans, um, they, they have their own, you know, a religion. Mm -hmm. And uh, because Beyond Good and Evil 2 is a prequel to Beyond Good and Evil 1, we want to add a lot of details about how the world is, you know, those names, Page. Mm -hmm. Is it a common name, you know, divinity name? So sometimes, you know, in some religion, you give the name of a divinity to a boy or a girl. Sure, yeah. So all these details are here to make people understand more uh, the world of Beyond Good and Evil. What, what? 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 That's Swiss fucking chocolate, Pete. And Knox is out of there. Uh, he's got that really cool glove contraption, and then apparently uh, some kind of jetpack to really help him yeah. make haste. Yeah, yeah. And again, it's very important because. Um, it's gameplay ingredients we have in the game. So that's the kind of dynamic, you know, move you can do um, into the game and how you can extract yourself from very dangerous situation and then jump and, and, and use the verticality of the city. So the pig is not happy with uh, what's just gone down, obviously, and he appears to have something in his forehead. Yeah, there is some blood and some pieces of glass that, that you know, fall on his, uh, on his head. And I love how many scars he has, too. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, this, this kind of scar uh, that's very important because um, hybrids, they have been created for dangerous tasks that no human wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they, are, they can o o also be used as fighters, you know, like sure. hybrid fighting against each mm -hmm. other. There, there's a lot of slavery. So it's another way to reinforce the depth of the, the world, the, the, you know, um, on, on all this history that the, the characters are carrying on, the, on, on their body. All right, a new character arrives on the scene in what appears to be a getaway vehicle. So yeah, yeah that's, that's Shani, she's the, the crewmate of Knox, they, they are used to do these kind of things all together. Now this look here is one of my favorites at the city because you really start to see those vertical layers stretching out. 
again, that mixture of ancient architecture but modern technology. Here you can see there are green, green gardens. At first it was like more technical things, but I really wanted the city to be spiritual, you know, it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. monks are into this kind of garden. Mm -hmm. There's no advert advertisement and things like that. If you look at every sign on, on, after a certain height, it's only religion. Mm. It's a, and, and, and there is this contrast between very old style temple and uh, holograms, you know, so that, that's the kind of idea we wanted to establish. Knox is firing off the back while Shawnee drives. Is this an experience that players are going to be able to sort of to have in the game and share? Yes, exactly. It's uh, really something that uh, is very important for our game is that you can play online and the vehicles are made so that you have different, you know, uh, places into the vehicle so, mm -hmm. and different role. And I really like this kind of dynamic when you're playing with someone. Blowing big stuff up, confirmed for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, and here we discussed that a lot too, because if you look, um, they're breaking a very special part of the buildings. So not the whole city is going to be um, breakable because mm -hmm. it's technically just impossible to break. This part of the building is made of glass and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's the part that is broken. In the real game, you have things you can break, things you can't break, and mm -hmm. I want that to be obvious for, for people. So they're breaking this big glass uh, part of the, of the temple. Okay, but if this planet is not all one big city, here we are out in the what appears to be the countryside. We're seeing some terrain, these isolated temples. There's gonna be a lot of exploration on the planets? Yeah, not just planets, uh, but also space, because the technology here uh, that we have has allows us to go seamlessly uh, between the ground, uh, interiors, and space. There's no transition, no loadings, nothing like that. Shani and Knox are not alone, not a lone pair. They have a whole crew here who's excited to see them back. Yeah, that, again, this is very, very important. In Beyond Good and Evil 2, you have spaceships of different sizes. As a player, you can have a very, very big spaceship, and you can use it as a garage with your other spaceships. Mm -hmm. And uh, you also have a crew. And the other thing here that is very important is that it's very cozy. You know, it's looked like, like the interior of a house. I also noticed that among the human characters, we've got a few more hybrids. In, as part of the crew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Every member of the team has a role, mm -hmm. a very clear role. And uh, here we wanted to, to showcase the, the fact that they are very different because some are animals, some are humans. And that's a bit the message be, behind the, that trailer is that whatever is your skin color, origin, if you are an hybrid, whatever you are, you, you are part of the same team, you know, and you will, you will share the adventure. And that's, that's a very important message for us. And that's exactly the, the, the heart of being good and evil. Well said, yeah. And it, that heart comes through. That is a really sweet PC case mod. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, here we wanted to connect with Beyond Good and Evil 1, you know, where you have the, what we call the M-Disc. Mm -hmm. It was a way to, uh, you know, in, even if it's a futuristic world, you still have objects that contains data. Mm -hmm. And here the datas are inside of the, what we call the, the big AI of the spaceship. Mm -hmm. So here this um, skull is in fact the, the, the character that represents, the, that, it, that is the spaceship. Like in Beyond Good and Evil 1, she's got a bag and there is a guy into the bag, a kind of computer, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, speaking with her. Mm -hmm. That's exactly the same ID. Oh, but now it's the spaceship that is able to speak. Here it is not speaking, but... So the question is, what's on the disc? A map. Exactly. A map with a mysterious artifact in the middle of it and also a dead guy. Exactly. That, that's what a good map should be. You know, it's attracting you. You want to you want to, to travel to this direction, mm -hmm. but it's going to be dangerous. Mm -hmm. Others did it before, they died, spaceships get destroyed, and if you look in the background, there is even a planet that is going to be you know, destroyed by this magnetic field, very powerful, mm -hmm. and I don't want to say too much things about that. Now, I don't want to spoil anything about the game. That's a nice color, green, and those eyes. What's, a, what's another word for like a greenish color, would you say? Maybe it's also a precious metal of some kind. Yes, I see what you mean very clearly. And again, that's a connection with Beyond Good and Evil 1, you know, uh, the jade color and... Uh, but, but again, uh, we don't want to spoil the story. Uh, we don't want to do shortcuts about that. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, there, there are connections, clearly. And then the main theme of Beyond Good and Evil 1. Mm. 
along with one final surprise. This is a huge spaceship and you are taking to the stars. Super quick. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's the end. The reveal of the spaceship and the fact that we started with this very dark place, you know, with this very small restaurant, mm -hmm. a lot of details, small things, and then it's opening to something very large. And that's an idea behind that trailer is that, okay, now Beyond Good and Evil 2 is back. It's back for true. It's, mm -hmm. it's here. The game is going to be huge. Michelle, thank you so much for talking through the trailer, uh, sharing more about Beyond Good and Evil 2. I'm so excited. Uh, honestly, to go back and watch the trailer again, because I feel like there's even more stuff I might have missed. A lot. You can't imagine. Uh, there's a lot of information about the world, but there's also Easter eggs. You know, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And it could be very, very cool if people try to identify them, you know, find them. They can connect to our website. They can share about those Easter eggs between each other. So everybody can, can yes, join what we call our Space Monkey program, mm -hmm. which is letting people enter the development, you know, discussing with us uh, and making Beyond Good and Evil as cool as possible.